everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art chef, and we're back for another exciting day of acrylic April, a 30-day painting uh, challenge that we do every April from April 1st to April 30th. This year's theme is abstract, and today we're doing a Mark Rothko-inspired piece. Now, this is not a, a replica of a painting by Mark Rothko. This is just a color field painting. That's the type of abstract that this is that we're going to do together. I'm going to show you actually how you can create this. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is helping me bring this program to you so that you can be learning all about abstract together. We've got a lot of fun facts and tips and everything. And this is actually, I think, going to be one of the surprising ones that many of you come back and say, I really enjoyed making this today. I didn't know I would, but I actually do. And I had always sort of wondered about color field painting. That's where you just have these strong fields of color that vibrate and radiate at you keep in mind we'll talk about this a little bit that you know this is smaller than most color field paintings which are usually quite large <laughs> quite quite ginormous yeah. um to help you in this journey though a couple extra things to think about is if you check the description below this will be time stamped and marked the materials will be down there um if you're looking for the materials we do have them available at our art store so you can get them there you can also just use what you have so don't feel like you got to go get anything i also have a school uh class that this is all sequentially put together if you don't want to do the free finding everything on youtube but of course, as per usual, all the YouTube stuff is totally free and you can follow the whole program that way. We've got the Acrylic April group where we can share in and you can talk to other people about how weird Acrylic April Abstract has been if you want to. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can check out the book on uh, uh, that, that you can get for this. So if you want written instructions for all of this, we have that as well. Lots of resources. A lot. Tons of resources. And while this is sort of a simplistic one, I think it's one that's deep. So let's get our emotions and our our sense of color together and come back and meet at this canvas right now. I'm going to show you how to paint color field abstract. To begin this journey into color field painting, we're starting on a colorless blank canvas. It's a white canvas. Not that that's never been hung in a museum before, because let's be honest, it has. But we are going to be applying some color to this 8x8. Eight eight. I've got phthalo green, cad red medium, Mars black, titanium white, cad yellow medium, and ultramarine blue to create this. So this is going to be Mark Rothko inspired. But again, remember, it is not one of his paintings. It's just inspired by the idea of color field theory, which he didn't really consider himself to be a part of, interestingly enough. Hmm, he didn't like that's labels. Interesting. You don't like the labels. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down into steps. If John can throw up a step one for me, I'll show you the first part of what we're going to do. So I'm going to come in here and I will go ahead and take ah, the handy dandy hog bristle again, my number 20 Artini brush. And I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to come in with black and I'm going to kind of create a vignette around the sides. Now with this type of painting, you probably do want to paint the sides of the art. You wouldn't traditionally frame it. A frame would really interfere with it. Um, color field painting is interesting. I was, I really debated, was I going to introduce some of the more known concepts of modern abstract art? And the modernist movement to everybody or, you know, because those can be so controversial. People have very strong opinions about, uh, I think like one of his paintings, Orange and Orange, sold for like $87 million. Wow. <laughs> right. Now, keep in mind, though, there's some big differences between what we're doing here today and what Mark Rothko did. One, which is scale. Huh, so yeah. we're, we're doing on a very tiny surface what, what he did on a massive scale. And some of what is attributed to his work to make it strong and impactful, uh, where people use words like, rivery or uh, spiritual or inspirational is that the works were so large that they you know could almost take up an entire room or gallery in a museum very large works of art and these are very small but i think that we can get the basic idea of what we're doing with this small canvas i think we can understand color field yeah uh through this and it's a fun day and remember, this is a great way to do art. It's a wonderful way to decorate your home. I think color filled painting is a wonderful way to decorate your home. So introducing you to it will help you in your creative life. I'm going to dry this. We'll come back and do the next step. 
So in this next step here, step two, we're going to come in with our CAD red and we're going to paint our painting a fairly solid CAD red. We're going to do an interesting trick around the outer corners, but I just want to right now get a nice CAD red all around the painting. And then I'll show you that kind of faded thing that he was sort of known for. And if you think about it already, you're kind of seeing some of what color field is. And it's okay, by the way, if as you're doing this year's Acrylic April, it's okay to not like every style of modern painting or every style of abstract painting. Yeah, I kind of like this one. I think it's neat. Well, and again, you know, how we react to color, right? Um, is pretty profound. He considered himself a myth, myth maker. He considers his paintings mythic. I, I, mm, I don't know if I ever got as deep into it as maybe some have. You know what I think is true? Hmm. You're on I, a mythic quest. I'm on a mythic quest. I think I, you know, I come from Gen X where, you know, Star Wars is my myth. <laughs> but I understand what he was trying to say. Now, while everything is still sort of wet, right, and I've got this nice solid field of red here, I've got this nice solid field of red here. I'm going to take my CAD red in my Mars black and kind of create a little half tone between the bright field of red. Can you see how we're doing? This is how we're going to get the faded effect. Ah. Faded. Yeah. He had kind of like his edges would sometimes oh, be yeah, they a were little very brushy. diffused. Yeah. And so when you're duplicating a, a famous art style, and keep in mind that style isn't under copyright. Images are under copyright. Um, though that may be changing <laughs> soon because of artificial intelligence. But at the moment, that is the rule. <laughs> and so we can absolutely look at a style or concept and then create original works around it. So, so just continuing around here, right, as we go, rinsing, rinsing, rinsing out, right, getting back to that pure pigment and I'm definitely going to dry my brush out. I'm going to come around here and strengthen that red color. Right, kind of trimming that edge out. Cad red and the cadmium pigments do lend themselves to color field painting because their colors are, they almost vibrate. That's kind of the idea of it is the way color tends to, to vibrate or be observed by our little human brain. And you wouldn't think we'd paint it that carefully, but that's part of what we're sort of thinking about in this type of painting is, is how we see these colors and how we interact with these colors. Right. You know, and that's, and that's the important thing. How we see the color and how we interact with the color. You can see just creating that kind of little faded, faded effect to the edge. And to really finish that off, then I might come back with my brush really rinsed out and my black paint just to tip the edge a deeper block again. See how we're doing here? Yeah. Coming along this little edge here and dipping this into that deeper, deeper black. There we go. Just running into that deeper, deeper black. And again, if you were to do this like on a six foot by six foot, you would get even more of that like levitating feeling or all of that that's somewhat attributed to this style of art because the scale is impactful to the result. That's just, that's yeah, just true you. about yeah. it. Now let's dry everything thoroughly because I'm going to show you a neat trick on how to have a good line or edge um, without having to have the steadiest hand in the universe. So let's continue on to our next step, step three. 
So I'm going to use a really helpful tool called a T-square. And I am going to measure a couple of things. I'm going to come in, oh, about two inches on either side of my surface. And I will make some vertical lines. All right, little vertical up and down lines. And then I will use this two inches on the other side, kind of come in to create this kind of interior square. See how we're getting that? And that lets us just have some straight lines yeah. in our surface to kind of create maybe an interior color field to what we're seeing here, okay? So I'm going to come here and in the center I'm going to focus this with some yellow, right? So let's take a bit of our yellow and a smidge of our red. I'm going to come right in the center. There we go. Smidge of yellow. And it's good that the red is kind of showing through. I do actually want that. Coming in with just a little more red right here. Kind of on that outside edge. It's not that different from what we did with the black. Or maybe it's a little more orange here in that center. All right. So you can see how those two colors sort of interplay against each other a bit. Yeah. Maybe go a little more just bright yellow. Even the brush strokes sort of play against each other. They do. I like that. I like that we can really see these brush strokes kind of coming out and playing against each other. And so I'm making the color brighter. kind of in that center there, so it's really glowing. And you might not necessarily think of when you see a color field painting that there's that type of tonal variance in the painting. I'm going to come here and sort of soften this edge here with my brush. Soften the edge with my brush. Grab a little bit of my red again. Just playing with that. And we can bring some of that around here, that tonal variance. All right. And if I want to, I can create even more focus in the center by adding a little white into my yellow. And coming here very lightly in the center with just a little white and yellow. So sometimes when you're really new to painting and you see a very simplistic modernist piece, you might be like, oh, there's nothing that went into that. And when you go to do it, yours won't feel kind of the same as what you were inspired by. And that's because you might not be aware of all these little decisions that are being made within the painting to create the drama that you're responding to here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to dry this very thoroughly. And we come back, I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. So I'm going to take this ruler here for step four. And I'm going to come above my orange square. And I'm going to go ahead and add another little chalk line. Uh, I do the ruler because it's about exactly an inch wide. So it does give me some nice, you know, consistency and balance on that. And I'm picking that balance just because, you know, we've got a square here. And that balance will be nice in relationship to the square. 
I gotta put a little more of my chalk out. This is a Dritz talk tool and it just allows me to draw. You can find these um, anywhere that you find uh, sewing notions and supplies. And it does make doing straight lines and drawing inside a surface really easily. And because it's regular chalk, it just vanishes into, into the uh, kind of ether here. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this as sort of a guide and I'm going to come back with my uh, same hog bristle brush and I'm going to mix my phthalo green and my ultramarine blue together and it's going to create a teal and I'll go ahead and get a little white into that so that we can kind of see the teal. A little bit better in this background. So I'm using tinting here to help me do that. And I'm just using the width of the brush. Right? And that looks really, that's nice and that's very strong. And I kind of very much like that at the bottom there. Right? I like what's it happening there. It is very there. strong there. And I'm going to add another back and forth, just the width of my square. And those colors, the way that they are kind of in contrast and stuff, they begin to radiate against each other. And that's kind of what we've got going on here. I can even bring this just a smidge past there, right? And I'm going to definitely rinse this all off. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And I'm gonna go ahead and get into my red again, just my pure red. and come down the vertical. So we have that sort of, you know, blended red that we had done, but now we've got this very vibrant red. Keeping as straight of a line as possible, you know, as that I'm up to today. And you can see the chalk lines give me the structure to sort of freehand these shapes, but still have Shape. Now I'm going to come across on a straight line on the edge of my brush. Look at us go there. That does a thing, doesn't it? Do you notice how that creates, that separation creates a little dynamism, right? Yeah, the way that does. those objects float in the field away from each other. That's what they, they're, when they're talking about floating and stuff like that's what's happening is the color is floating. And we're letting the color float. And so there we go. So we're allowing those fields. Now you can imagine on a very large piece, that's kind of dramatic. Yeah. And if that's, if that's your jam, right, that's really powerful. You know, and you can sit and peacefully look at that for a while and just sort of contemplate the color. And that's kind of the hullabaloo that everyone's talking about. Now let's dry it. I'm going to show you how you finish this piece off. So the last step of this is to clean it up. I cleaned all my chalk out with this damp brush. It's clean water on a damp brush. And as you can see, it just removed all the chalk from this. I'm not going to sign it. Uh, because in color filled painting, you're supposed to minimize the artist. The artist isn't supposed to be the focus of the work and the signature would definitively disrupt it. So I've definitely put it on the back. Fun fact, Mark Rothko and the modernist art movement was actually funded by the CIA. Wow. Yeah, no, seriously. Like it was, it was a, a couple of agents create, created an operation where they decided that modernist art did not depict class warfare because uh, it wasn't figurative and it was very emotional and at the time there was a lot going on in art with that and, and they wanted to I guess diminish it to, to 
Huh, that's interesting. <laughs> so they funded the modernist movement. The artists didn't know, Rothko and the other artists, the movement did not know, but it was confirmed it was actually a CIA operation. And I was saying to John, like, I would be completely okay if the CIA wanted to go by the patron page. Oh, yeah. And patron us. Feel free. Because, you know, I feel like we bring good into the world and also don't, we're not very divisive. We're just no, not so at all. If we, we'll take some of that if they are still running that program secretly. Secretly. Thank <laughs> Secretly you. Secretly <laughs> program. Um, on a sad note, I want to add that Mark Rothko um, left this world prematurely um, due to depression. And uh, to remind everybody that uh, mental health care is important. Art is helpful in our mental health care process. But remember all those other things, sleep, eating well, and seeing a doctor if things are getting away from you are also important. And I think he would want me to shut, shout that out. Um, and that's just not, that's something that we'll talk about a lot of times with famous artists because, you know, a lot of times people paint to deal with strong feelings and this type of abstract work is intrinsically about strong feelings. Though you may not have thought so before you painted your own and had your own strong feelings about how frustrating this was to construct <laughs> for such a simplistic piece. Now, um, if you had fun and you're enjoying this year's Acrylic April, which is abstract, I've been asked for this for years and years and years and years and you know i i decided to go for it this year mm -hmm. so it's acrylic abstract that's 30 days of daily painting where i paint an abstract every day and um to go with that there is a book that you can get uh, and it has a, extra fun little tidbits in it and then there's also a school that you can go to if you want to have um all of this kind of cohesively linked together sequentially with some extra learning materials that's there and you can do that um you can of course just watch the video and just paint along for free we always have that free option yep. um you know if, if a traceable is needed for one of these paintings a lot of these paintings won't need traceables but if a traceable is needed you know that will be available to you for free you know you can get that but those are the two options you get the school you've got the book um also you can get these materials on our website if you choose Absolutely. to get these materials on our website, you can also shop elsewhere. I'm totally cool with any of that. Um, so these are options of things for you to know about. Uh, you know, I hope you will continue to meet up with us in this daily journey. And even if you're a person who didn't like abstract, I hope you're going for the whole month because I think you will learn some important things about art, about design, form, texture, function, the way these things all play together in a painting. And you'll come back to your representational works like landscapes and still lives with a stronger sense of design. So I do that think sense, yeah. I do think it's good for all artists to do this. And I, I think it'll give you a deeper appreciation. You know, maybe you'll go to the museum mm, yeah. and you will see a painting like this and you'll be like, I kind of I kind of feel like I get it a little bit more might be kind of a fun thing. All right, so beyond that, be good to yourself and be good to each other. And I do wanna see you in a newsletter really soon. Bye-bye.